welcome to epg patshala i am dr devraj assistant professor in department of philosophy sri shankarachara university kannada and in this session of religion and philosophy we are starting with a module on the philosophy of sri narayana guru and we are coming to the program and initially we are we have a biographical sketch of sri narayana guru in this session we are going to discuss about the philosophy of sri narayana guru a revolutionary thinker of kerala in this session the objectives of this lesson is the is to discuss about the emergence of sri narayana guru in the reform movements of kerala and also a brief biographical sketch of the philosophy of sri narayana guru and uh, the advaitic reinterpretation in the philosophy of sri narayana guru and also we are going to discuss the social philosophy of sri narayana guru and see in the second half of the 19th century witnessed various social and religious reform movements in kerala the most important aspect of this movement in kerala was that it awakened the lower caste people of kerala society from their age old slumber and the struggles against the evils of the hindu society it paved the way for the many revolutionary changes in the social lives of hindus it was a reaction against the irrational practices and customs prevalent in the society at that time the reform movements had as its aim the eradication of untouchability the breakdown of inter sub caste barriers and abolition of many costly and wasteful social practices and customs prevailed in that time this was led by chatambi swami and then by sri narayana guru in travancore and also brahmananda shiva yogi and vagbadananda and swami ananda dirtha in the north malabar and all of them are revolted against the then existing social order in which brahmins and also other classes of hindu society enjoyed a monopolistic position and eventually helped in ushering in a new social order in which the non brahmins communities came to have their legitimate place now we we are going to discuss about a brief biographical sketch of sri narayana guru he was born in 1854 in chembalandi in the neerva family and his father was madan ashan and mother was kutiyamma from his childhood days onwards he had developed a mental attitude towards devotion and spirituality he had his first lesson in malayalam and sanskrit from chembalandi mutta pillai a good scholar of sanskrit in that locality his uncle krishna vaidya taught him ayurveda sanskrit astrology he also acquired proficiency in tamil at the age of 24 he was sent to kayangulam and there he acquired sound scholarship of logic and philosophy it was there he became well versed in vedantic and upanishadic wisdom but during this period of his life Sri Narayana Guru was passing through a mental struggle because on the one hand he was obliged to support his family by fulfilling his duties and on the other hand he was faced with an ever increasing inner urge for spirituality though his family members made him marry at the age of 28 to divert him after a short period of married life he left his house and became a wandering sanyasi he left his home in search of truth and met several persons discussed about the ways to attain self realization he met uh, chatambi swamigal and many other persons discussed with them uh, about the ways to attain self realization later he went to marudamalai in tamil nadu for contemplation and there he attained self realization and we see sri narayana guru's active public life or public career started in 1887 when he established a shiva temple at arvipuram near tiruvannathapuram by installing a shivalinga there according to the vedic tradition the installation of the deity 
was the right of Brahmins. But here the installation was done by a, a, an Irava. This act of Guru provoked the upper caste Hindus and they questioned him. He gave them a simple reply that he had installed Irava Shiva not and not a Brahmana Shiva. This act of Guru provoked the upper caste Hindus and they questioned him. He gave them a simple reply that he had installed Irava Shiva and not a Brahmana Shiva. This reply was enough to shake the age-old religious hegemony of the Brahmanas and other upper caste and it also represented a self-determination of the lower caste people to fight against the caste rigidity and the upper caste dis domination. The Sri Narana Guru initiated a social reform movement through the Arivipuram installation. The Arivipuram installation which was a silent revolution to eliminate all evils on Hindu society and to establish a society based on social equality. In continuation of the Arivipuram installation, he established several temples in various parts of Kerala and appointed Irava priests in these new temples. Even the untouchables like Pulayas were permitted to enter these places. In 1905, he shifted from Arivipuram to Varkala. Here Swamiji constructed a temple and installed Sharada Devi, namely Saraswati, the goddesses of wisdom and education. Another important temple set up by him is the Jagannatha temple at Talichari in 1908. In 1913, he founded Advaita Ashramam on the banks of river Periyar at Aluvai. But this was not dedicated to any particular deity. One will have to worship the all-pervading universal self he likes. It is regarded as the highest form of temple worship. Now he wanted to show that the devotees can worship God with, without idols. Here he himself took classes, students about Gita, Upanishads and sometimes in Sanskrit also. In 1920, he opened a temple with the idol of Chidambara Nadha or Shiva at Karamukhu in Trishur district. His last installation was at Kavalangodam at Chertala Taluk where he installed Shakteshwara combined combination of Shiva and Parvati. And uh, subsequently he installed another temple, Jagannatha temple was set up by Sri Nara Guru at Thalichari in 1908. And in 1913, Guru founded an Advaita ashram at Alve. On 14th June 1927, Guru installed a mirror in the place of the idol, Om engraved on it. This was known as the Kannadi Pradishta or Mirror Pradishta at Kavalankodam. After this incident, Sri Guru silently transformed his activities into uh, into the construction of uh, educational institute. With Kavalakodam, Gurudeva withdrew from the temple construction and insisted upon the construction of educational institutes. Several centers were established with educational activities, libraries and reading rooms. Through this, his aim was to make Irava uh, with others, other lower caste, free from the downfall of the uh, upper caste people. Before the installation of these temples by Sri Narana Guru, the Avarnas or the backward worship evil gods like Chatan, Chamundi, Maruda, etc. They were not allowed to worship other gods, Shiva and Vishnu, etc. He started network of temples throughout the state where Avarnas were also permitted to worship. He also removed all idols of evil gods and gave them new mandras to worship other gods and ask the people to follow. He abolished animal sacrifices also. Guru combined against the observance of customary rituals and ceremonies and irrational practices. He also asked people to conduct marriages in a most simple way and gave a call to Iravas to give up the occupation of toddy tapping. This toddy tapping is the usual profession of the Irava people at that time. 
he had to face stiff opposition from the caste upper caste hindus for his work against the caste domination and the caste rigidity and from his own edava communities also for his reform movements within the edava community but in the long run this reform movements initiated by guru gave way to steady progress of the community in the educational and in economic sphere also in 1902 Sri Narayana Guru established SNDP Yogam Yogam and see the great Malayalam poet Kumaran Nashan was the first secretary to the Yogam in the early days this organization fought for many social rights denied to the lower caste it was in its first annual session was held at Arivipuram in 1904 but later Guru set up residence at Vakala which became his permanent headquarters thereafter in the later years sinarana guru stressed the fundamental unity of the human race and took the view that religion should not consist of external and meaningless practices and rituals he enunciated the famous dictum one caste one religion one god for man oru jaati oru madam oru devam manushyan Another famous saying of Guru was whatever be one's religion it is enough if the individual becomes good madam edayalum manushyan nannayal madhi in short according to sri narayana guru the basic objectives of every religion was to elevate the moral character of the individual and hence no religion or caste was inferior to any other he also advocated inter caste marriages as a means of achieving social cohesion and thereby evolving a classless and a casteless society in his teaching he emphasized the imperative need for tolerance and goodwill among the members of all communities one of his fellow traveler k ayappan was an ardent follower of guru who started the brotherhood movement sahodara prasthanam in 1917 and made a crusade against untouchability in 1924 the all religious conference at advaita ashram was conducted by sri narayana guru he stated that the aim of the conference was not to argue and win but to know and make known the aim of this conference was to expose to the world that the cardinal principle of all religions was one and the same and ultimate aim was to self realization and guru also encouraged the vaikam satyagraham which is a famous revolutionary movement in kerala which was for the right for the backward classes to walk through the roads near vaikam temple during this period he met gandhi ji on 12th of march 20 1925 he told gandhi that to have the real freedom the caste system and other evil customs existing in the society should be eradicated years after gandhi made this statement at the calcutta conference about guru's vision this is a picture of the famous meeting of gandhi with sri narayana guru and when we are coming to the philosophical aspect of his uh, uh, his important works darshanamala is considered as one of the important work of sri narayana guru darshanamala is in sanskrit is the most important work of guru in which he present his views on advaita vedantin and this was and uh, this was presented by swami in a remarkable clarity in jadi mimamsa he exposes the irrational nature of the caste system in atmopadesha shadagam which is written in malayalam provides a brilliant exposition of the vedanta philosophy in 1928 guru silently passed away at shivagiri now we are moving to the next part of the philosophy of sri narayana guru and how he is interpreted the advaita philosophy as you know adi shankara's interpretation of advaita philosophy recognized by the world over as the greatest exposition of indian thought 
he speaks about the absolute oneness with Brahman. The quintessence of his philosophy is summarized as Brahma Satyam Jagat Mithya Jeevo Brahmaiva Nabara. That Brahman alone is real and Jeeva is identical with Brahman and the world is an illusion. Originally, Bhadarayana is considered as the founder of the Advaita philosophy. And subsequently, Gaudabada is systematic expounder of the Advaita philosophy. And next, Shankaracharya is given a systematic and a logical precision and a, popular, and a popularity to Advaita philosophy. And above all, Srinarana Guru tried to reinterpret the philosophy of Advaita Vedanta. But the unfortunate twist and turn in the interpretation of the Advaita of the Varnashrama Dharma led the Hindus into a caste ridden society, dividing man against man and degrading a vast section of society into untouchables. Religion in its credibility as a spiritual binding given a place in, uh, in the social system of that period. And this is a hurdle for uh, human development. And Sridhanada Guru originally or basically his philosophy is a restatement, restatement of the Advaita Vedanta. He expounded the philosophy of Advaita in his own way and in his work such as Atma Bhadesha Shadagam and Darshanamala etc. According to Srinarana Guru, the non-duality of Bhava and Sat, the non-duality of the apparent world and the Brahman or Atman, the one reality is established in this work. He held that ultimately it is one absolute reality or Atman that unfolds itself in each of us as our physical bodies as the animating principle in us, as the internal and external functions and uh, dualities as everything in this world. According to Guru, the mind is what conducted the search for the all underlying reality. That reality is none other than the substance that has assumed the form of the of form of that every same mind. Therefore, what the searching mind has to do to know the all underlying Atma is interiorize its search and realize that thou art, tat omasi. The reality underlying all bearing is that which is remain in another as well. Myself and others being one substance, what is good and dear for me should naturally be good and dear for others as well. This principle, when applied in ethics, turns out to be the universal and eternal norm. The actions that ensure happiness to oneself and others alike are good. The action that ensures happiness to oneself and causes unhappiness to others are evil. In Atmopadesha Shadagam, Guru expounded his philosophy in its entirety stating that there exists only one reality, the Atman, unconditioned, unconscious in essence. This is the entity that pervades through all being from the mind, the subtlest manifestations to the limitless physical world, the grossest manifestations. Just as waves cannot exist separately from the ocean, the world of everything in it, including oneself cannot exist apart from Brahman or Atman, which is also known as Brahman. Inherent within Atman is the mysterious Maya, the power that causes all illusory phenomena to appear within itself. The world thus takes from branching into the interim, internal subjectivity of world and the external objective world are ultimately everything becomes recognized to Satchidananda. The philosophy of oneness found expression in Narayana Guru's life as compassion towards everyone and towards every being. According to him, there exists only one reality, the Atman, the unconditioned consciousness in essence. This is the entity that pervades through all beings from mind to the subtlest, uh, subtlest of manifestations to the physical world to the grossest manifestations. His emphasis on Atma or Aham 
unconditioned consciousness of arrival in essence helps to resolve many of the philosophical problems very easily he affirms the advaitic vision as guaranteeing the equality of all beings from the above discussions we can see that the philosophy the advaitic reinterpretation of uh, sridharana guru is not completely different from the traditional advaita vedanta but he give a more social aspect to the advaitic uh, philosophy and this social aspect of advaita philosophy we can very clearly witnessed in his social thought as also now we come to that point also the social philosophy of sri narayana guru is initiated a series of measures to mitigate the caste system and also to being about the social and moral advancement of the society during this period we can see that uh, uh, swami vivekananda called this age when uh, swami vivekananda when he visited kerala during this period he called uh, kerala as a lunatic asylum mainly because he witnessed the social evils in that society the ill, ill practices of untouchability and other social exploitation in this juncture sri narayana guru tried to revolutionize the society to eradicate this untouchability and uh, the social evils for making an ad- ideal society he advocated an eightfold path which consisted of education cleanliness bhakti organization agriculture trade handicraft and technological trade from this eightfold path we can sum up the eightfold path that by synthesizing this eightfold path sri narayana guru try to assimilate uh, religion morality education and industry to the social economic and spiritual development of the people and in order to init- in order to fulfill this eightfold path he insisted another 10 commandments and this is the famous 10 commandment of sri narayana guru these 10 commandments are be enlightened with education be strengthened with organization make progress to industry don't speak caste ask caste and think caste one caste one religion and one god for mankind whatever be the religion it is sufficient if it is good for mankind whatever be the difference in faith dress or language as all humanity belongs to one caste there is no harm in their marriage and inter dining do not make liquor don't drink and don't sell it ninth one spend judicially and the last of the 10 commandment when who makes dharma and uh, work for the progress and the well being of his neighbor this is the famous 10 commandments of sri narayana guru now sri narayana guru came for the came from a uh, section of a large population of indian masses who were totally neglected oppressed and suppressed over thousands of years and exploited by the higher classes they were worse than slaves and they could never think of being human beings that was the condition of the masses called the depressed classes and these lower class people found a savior in sri narayana guru he stressed to the need of need for education culture and spiritual enhancement of his people he consecrated temples prescribed sanskrit as well as modern education economic and social development he asked his men to stand on their own with self respect and self help to increase their inherent capabilities he gave shape to a network of institutions to serve the people in the social economic and religious needs this in all his deeds and thoughts sri narayana guru stands as a supreme symbol of hope and redemption to the depressed classes in the present chaotic world the values of humanness liberalism secularism and uh, universalism as advocated by sri narayana guru for the human development and world solidarity and world peace are forgotten by all of us his clarion call of uh, one caste one religion and one man one god for man is a sublime and unique philosophy which is a suitable 
philosophical aspect in this contemporary period. And uh, we can see that in the contemporary situation, it is the best philosophy, best suitable philosophy for the new generations. And in that philosophy, we can see that all legions are true and all legion preach the same truth and they mutually respect the inner essence of all religious truths. Thank you all of you.